Okay, we're back with the Committee of the Whole. We have um, six items. The first item is adding a conflict of interest clause to City Council Rules and Procedure. Mr. Stahlheim. Thank you. David Stahlheim, Community Development Block Grant Manager. Um, this issue came up uh, during some monitoring that we had in the past year of some of our uh, recipient agencies where some issues of uh, potential conflict of interest came up. And, uh, as we started looking into the issue and looking for uh, what's required from the federal government to have a conflict of interest policy uh, if you receive any federal funds, uh, we also decided that we needed to look at every agency, including ourselves. And so when we did, we found out that uh, the city of Bellingham had not uh, ever adopted a policy with respect to conflict of interest with respect to the elected officials. We had some things uh, in our administrative uh, things, but. Uh, Mayor Kelly has actually uh, signed off on another administrative policy to cover staff. Um, what this is is basically is, is to govern your actions when it comes to HUD funds. Uh, so it's trying to avoid any conflict of interest. So if, if you have, as we present projects to you that have federal funding uh, associated with it, if you have any financial interest, either you personally or a family member has any financial interest in the outcome of that, you need to recuse yourself and not participate in that, that process. Uh, the same thing, you can't even influence the outcome of it. So you don't participate in the discussion, you just uh, you abstain and, and walk away from that discussion. I've never seen that situation ever happen here at the City of Bellingham, it's not an issue, but it's really important that we have these policies uh, in effect. One of the things that, also just kind of a warning, and I'm not sure if it'll ever happen, but just it's one of these odd things too is there's some things that may happen that are a little bit secondary that you don't think about because as we do more and more projects that fund housing, uh, for example, is that you may have a family member that also may benefit from getting housing that's assisted with our funds. And so this also affects that. So if, if you have a project that comes in front of you uh, and if you know that a family member might be eligible for that low income housing, you would need to recuse yourself because those policies would also extend to any of the family members because they would benefit from our financial assistance in that project. So uh, these are uh, kind of the things that uh, kind of watch. I haven't seen anything ever happen. I don't anticipate it happening, but it is a requirement of our federal funding that we do have a policy in place and this helps do Thank that. Thank you, David Terry. Yeah. Question on that last point about a family member. Are you saying if, we, if anybody has a family member whose income is under a certain level, then we have to recuse ourselves because they could possibly benefit uh, at some point apply for something? No, just because only if you know that they're going into a project. So let's okay. say that okay, that's different than they're that. on yeah. a waiting list for a Catholic housing project or something like that for rental housing. So okay, that makes sense. The way you worded it, it was, oh, I was yeah. just thinking that that's too broad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and there's some things you don't even know if there's a conflict, if it's not right. apparent at the time either. Yeah. And, and so again, okay. it's just those things that are clear and obvious. Yeah. That. Roxanne, then Jack. That's that's easy. Well, I do not have a conflict in moving that we add the conflict of interest clause to the City Council Rules of Procedure to satisfy the housing and urban development requirements. Second. Motion remain second. Jack. So I see here listed that uh, it's also partners. What constitutes a partner? Uh, any agency that receives funding uh, from us. So oh. nonprofit agencies, things like that. So. For example, um, we provide funding in our thanks to the Opportunity Council. If you happen to also work uh, under contract to the Opportunity Council. Yeah, I think this is oh, the, the uh, different type of partner. Uh, his or her partner. So someone. <laughs> thanks, Amy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> domestic That's what partners. I thought it was. <laughs> domestic partners, recognized partners. Amy can. So they have, it's recognized, okay, yeah. in one form or fashion. Okay. Dan. Um, so I own a company that does work with um, nonprofit um, organizations and one of those is Kulshan Community Land Trust. Um, are these dollars, or is this language specific to the HUD funding? Um, because the, the pool of money that my company um, accesses um, from that organization is not associated with these dollars at all. Yeah, so this is only associated with the uh, HUD dollars and also our housing levy dollars, but like for Kulshan, um, 
we provide direct funding to home buyers. We don't provide funding to culture, so we're not funding their operations. So if you're getting your funding from their uh, operations, then that's not funding that we're paying for. If we ever enter into a situation that we're providing funding directly to Cullion for operations, of which you'd be getting some of that work, uh, we'll let you know that in the action plan, and you would probably need to recuse yourself at that point. But that that is not a practice that we do at all right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is there anything else? Is there a motion? Oh, she already made a motion. Motion was made and seconded. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries 601. Thank you. We'll go to the next item. Extension of renewal of emergency ordinance creating interim zoning for the establishment of facilities producing, processing, and retailing recreational marijuana. Again. Just because it happened before, you said 601. It's actually 60. With one excuse. Oh, you said one excuse? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. That's right. Sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Nabafeld, go ahead, sir. Good afternoon. Kurt Nabafeld, uh, Planning and Community Development Department. Um, unfortunately, Alan is not here to present this today, so <laughs> I will uh, take part in this. Um, we are asking you, uh, as mentioned, to uh, extend and renew interim rules and regulations regarding uh, the production, processing, and retailing of recreational marijuana. Uh, council has renewed and extended these rules um, a couple times, most recently back in February of 2015, and these interim rules now expire in August 12th. Um, these rules do allow for the production and processing of, of recreational marijuana uh, within industrial areas. Uh, it also allows for the retailing uh, in industrial areas as well as commercial areas with certain rules and regulations. Um, under state law, passage of the emergency ordinance requires the vote of at least five council members and a public hearing must be conducted within 60 days of that, that passage. Staff recommends that the council renews the interim regulations. Um, it does maintain the status quo and if you have any questions about that, I can answer them for you or do my best to. Do you have any idea of the end game on this? We do actually. Um, the state is, with the most recent changes in the state legislature, uh, they have they will begin rulemaking. Uh, that rulemaking is supposed to end January 2016. So knowing that, uh, it's likely that we will have to extend the recreational one more time. Um, we also are having a, the public hearing tonight on the other side of that. Uh, again, the goal, the goal is to be able to bring both of those markets together under one set of rules and regulations. So um, our goal is to, by July of 2016 to have only one rule, one ordinance in place that covers both recreational and medical. Roxanne. I just have a general question, and maybe it's for another time, but I'm just wondering if other cities are banning these operations, do you expect to see more coming to Bellingham? Well, from the, the production processing, um, currently we have quite a few um, in operation or in going through the permitting process to uh, begin production and, and producing. Um, it's possible that we could see an increase on that. Uh, from the retail perspective, keep in mind that the state sets the, the numbers of how many stores can be open and that's um, already taken place. Essentially we're at that number now. Um, one of the things that, that may occur with the rulemaking is they will look at those numbers again and they may talk about extending those. Um, it's possible that if you have more and more jurisdictions that do propose bans um, that they may need to up that number, uh, but that would be something that we could address when we do the, the overall rule and making of it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Kurt, are, are you looking at, uh, because this emergency ordinance, it's, it's kind of rules are changed. Are we passing this tonight or do you want us to pass it in full uh, in the afternoon session? Uh, what we would expect you to do or hope to do is uh, take a vote today and then report out tonight on that vote. Okay, so yeah. we'll do it right now then. Yeah. Okay, so Even I would move I would move passage of the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Motion remain seconded. Even though we're having a public hearing tonight? On medical. The public oh, hearing right, is medical. different. I know. Oh, Sorry for the no, confusion. No, I, I understand. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I understand. Any other further questions? All those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries six zero with one excused. Okay, now we'll go on, we'll see you tonight, Kurt. Report on the status and next steps for the rental registration and safety inspection program.
Members of the Council, I join you this afternoon just to give you a very quick update on status of the first portion of the Rental Registration and Safety Inspection Program. <coughs> Excuse me. As Council members know, our registration period was from July 1st through the end of uh, the month. And I can give you some uh, our, of our unaudited numbers now. Um, we anticipated about 14,868 units to be registered. Um, as of this morning, we have 14,340 units registered. Whoa, great. So a very high rate of return and uh, from our estimates a fairly successful um, exercise. In terms of the number of properties that it indicated, and remember we're working off uh, a rubric that uses assessors data and uh, population, so it's not as precise. We estimated 4,700 and uh, about 4,800 uh, properties, and to date we have 5,675. So it looks like we're pretty good on track. Um, it looks like it was fairly successful. These are unaudited lists in that we haven't done the diligence of corresponding the uh, response we received, the parcel number, and all of the other ownership data, and we'll be needing to do that in the coming months. The schedule we are projecting for you is how that will play out. Um, we likely will get the unaudited list published again. That will have not been verified where we've corresponded what was submitted. Um, we already know that a number of properties came in and the property numbers, for example, don't match known numbers. So we have to sort all that out. Um, we will probably send our certificates out in early September. We'll send letters to all of those that were in our initial survey we have not spoken with yet who indicate they should have rental properties and, and encourage them to participate. I should note that uh, they may not have been trying to thwart the process. They may not have received the correspondence, been aware of it, may have moved in the assessor's date, address may have been wrong, tenant may have held the letter, things like that. So we'll follow up on that. Um, we'll wait till we get the responses from that and uh, we will uh, review the responses and check for completeness. Um, after that, uh, we'll still have a population, I think you recall, that just we haven't been able to reach, that we've had verification of. Might drive by, make sure there's actually a you know, something on the location, and we will provide a, a second letter. Um, we'll look for responses for that. The timelines get shorter. Um, at the end of the day, we look to start enforcement after the final review of uh, responses on those who did not participate in the program um, after the first of the year. So. Want to let you know on that, uh, we'll be coming back to see you as part of the uh, supplemental budget to fund the inspection component of this program, and uh, we'll uh, keep you posted. Questions, comments, Roxanne? How will the consistently defiant people be treated, just continual fines and fines and fines? Because I just um, heard a few community members saying that that's going to be their strategy. Well, um, I would say the vast majority of our community members are willful participants in this program. Um, some are participating, they did provide their concerns along with their payment. Um, there are some who are refusing to comply and like every, every other process we run, um, there are fines that accrue. At this point, we've suspended fining folks who have not participated, largely because of, of the startup making sure they're caught in. If there's, as council will call, you gave latitude for us to do so um, for the startup period for reasonable um, uh, the basis for not uh, complying. But again, um, I think the vast majority of people have participated with that and it will be just a compliance issue like any other compliance issue. Thank you. Dan. Just wanted to get a, a reminder on how many units um, that you expect to have inspected in 2016. I think it's 2,700 units uh, comes out a year. Um, a lot of that is because, as council will recall, there's provision for doing a sampling in larger projects. And if there were more than an X number of units, you only had to do five, I think is what it was. So it reduces the actual number of inspections. Of course, in those instances, if any of those five sample units fail, we expect them all. Jack. The, the 14,000 uh, unit count that you have, that also includes the exempt from inspections. That's like, correct. Like HUD and, yeah. Yeah, and, and so I think generally we feel fairly good about the, the numbers. They were registered, but they just didn't pay a fee yeah. for those exempt ones, yes. Any other questions? Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thanks for your report. Okay, Mr. Henshaw, second quarter financial report.
Thank you, Brian Hinshaw, Finance Department. This will be a brief overview summary of the second quarter financial report for the City of Bellingham. Um, the presentation and the financial internal financial statement are both online and are in much more detail than I'll go through today. Uh, the first thing is, is a mixed economic report on both national and local, but one of those that we track is positive. Non-farm um, number of jobs in Whatcom County is about 90,000 um, on average. Uh, it's, it's up about 3,000 per month um, for all six months of the first uh, this year. Um, so right now the unemployment statistic is 5.8 for the Whatcom County and unemployment number for the state of Washington and national are just ab below that at 5.3 percent. The other um, trend that we're looking for is building activity. This is the amount of permit value that goes through the permit um, center. You can see for the first six months of this year it's 68.2 million dollars. This is down significantly from the prior two years. Last year we had over 90 million dollars at this time. However, one large project or just timing of the projects um, makes a big difference in this. Um, for July, just as a side note, we did $21 million more in July. So um, we expect this year, um, year's activity overall to continue to be relatively strong. There is a good mix of activity. We talked about some of this earlier this morning, both single family and multifamily development, and then all types of developments are up there. I will make a note too that uh, some of this is the activity versus when the money actually comes to the city. So Rick and I were just discussing over there that um, revenue so far this year is flat, um, but we anticipate this to increase here shortly with the next month's activity. Citywide revenues are up from $107 million last year to $112 million this year. That's a 4% increase. The single largest increase happens to be here on uh, interest, income, rental, and bonds. This is a miscellaneous category. We had a large significant um, contribution from developers of $1.4 million. The other positive up here is other taxes. Read activity from the strong real estate market um, is up about $800,000 over last year. And then just to point out, the two large numbers here for bonds, this is going to be a um, federal clean water uh, loan that we're going to use for the pretreatment plant. That's the budgeted number here, why there's such a large budgeted. And then down here on capital projects, we also have a large number of grants that as we go into the construction season now forward, we draw down on those grants and so we'll use up a lot of that um, budgeted forecast for capital revenue there too. Any questions on that? Please interrupt if you have any questions as we go. Citywide expenditures, this is also up from last year, $99 million through June of 2014, um, $104 million through June of 2015, that's an increase of 5%. Overall operations are up 3% from 80 to $82 million. And I will just point out here and a couple different other places in the uh, presentation that salaries and benefits are significantly understated right now because of all the unsigned contracts. We have seven unsigned contracts, so we are still paying at 2013 or 2014 rates, so our operational expenses will go up when those contracts are settled. Um, the large number in the middle is for capital. We've done a lot of capital expenses um, and projects this year. It's up 14% over last year, or $3.6 million. First enterprise fund we'll look at is street revenues. Um, street revenues for the first six months are $5.6 million. Uh, you'll recall that this is the first year that we split street into two different funds. So all of the admin and engineering is now in an admin engineering internal service fund. So that's why you see a significant decrease here for other types of revenue. Um, but all other types of revenue are on track and on budget. And again, uh, large work in process or capital project backlog street has $25.5 million worth of capital projects that they're working through right now. A lot of these projects are multi-year projects, so that will be engineering and then construction in the following year. Street expenses are on track and on budget. Um, the significant change you see here in the middle is what I mentioned before, attributed to breaking out the internal service fund for engineering and admin. Um, all other costs and expenses are on budget. Um, capital projects is up $1.7 million over last year, 
Um, it's a 110% increase, so we're doing a lot more projects in the beginning of the year for street, and there's a lot of construction underway right now. Water revenues total in is $11.3 million of total revenue. Um, a lot of this is the same we've been talking about and watching as we sweep, sw switch people from unmetered to metered. This revenue goes down, this revenue goes up. It's on track and on budget. This little difference between um, the six month budgeted forecasted revenue and what we've achieved has to do more with the route scheduling. We bill every other month. So s June is a down month, July will be an up month and we'll correct for that during between now and the end, end of the year. Um, overall, the uh, water revenues are only up $250,000 over last year at this time. It's about a 2% increase. Water expenses are $8.4 million. Um, this is actually down from last year, about $900,000. And the two main factors for that are capital um, projects and also land acquisition. And for the watershed, Oftentimes it'll be one or two large acquisitions that'll happen and that's just timing of those two, two accounts that will take that into the budget and amount. Sewer revenues, $9.9 million for six months. Um, we again see the switch from unmetered to metered. Um, and then a slight decrease so far year to date in system demand charges. This also includes other revenues where we do interfund revenues between the two um, utility funds, sewer and water. Um, we are doing an accounting change for that, so we're trying to um, allocate costs to where we can. And so some of that is just a, an accounting change. Uh, let's see, billing cycles also attribute to the, some of this change, and in July I expect this to go up. Um, on the expense side, $9.6 million year to date. The main change here is that last year we were doing the wastewater treatment plant expansion. That construction is done, so you'll see a large decrease from here to here. For this year, although there is $7.4 million of work in progress in the sewer fund alone just for construction this year, capital projects. Um, overall expenses are down 29% or $4 million, and almost all of that is attributed to capital. Now we'll switch to the general fund. Um, this is the general fund dashboard, so a light greenish yellow color there is a positive number. Um, and this is showing you uh, the comparison for the historical rate of collection to what we budgeted. So in sales tax, we budgeted just over $12 million in sales tax revenue. So far, the first six months, the trend, the historical trend would forecast that out to the end of the year, meaning that we would collect $12.5 million. So we're ahead by about $500,000 in sales tax for the first six months. So that's a positive. The other positive I'll point out I talked about earlier is real estate. Um, REIT tax is way up, um, $3.9 million is a forecast. That's about the 2007-2008 trend when um, construction was going very well in Bellingham. Um, we've had the last three months all over $200,000 of collections, which is very high. Um, so it's, it's attributable to not only the real estate housing market, but also a couple of large apartment complexes that have changed hands recently. So it's a good trend right now. I don't expect it to continue all the way through the end of the year, but it is money. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. B&O tax, on the other hand, um, we are up over year over year from last year, but we did budget $13.4 million. And so far, the collection rate is, is slightly below that about 250,000, and then we did that also for all of the utility. And a lot of this has to do with just the collections on the winter and then coming into the fall. So some of this hopefully will correct, but we are trending on utility tax um, less than a million dollars of revenue so far year to date. So a little more detail on sales tax. Um, general merchandise is our biggest um, industry sector by far. It attributes about 15% of the total amount collected um, for the city. Year to date, it's off by 7.3%. This continues from last year. Um, so people are choosing not to spend um, some of their tax rebates or other savings on general merchandise items. They are spending it on autos and parts, um, food and drink establishments. Our three lar largest categories for the first six months all have to do with construction. 
So this ties into the REIT number earlier, but construction is up 44% over last year, building materials is up about 10%, and specialty trades is up about 9% over last year. So all of that industry tied to construction is, is doing very well year to date this year. This graph, I combined a couple items here. So this first line here is the forecasted revenue for the general fund. We are forecasting about $73 million of revenue this year. The two big spikes have to do with property tax. Um, you can see for the first six months that we've been ahead and behind the curve here. Right now we are slightly behind on a seasonal basis. And then also down here I was showing you the general fund expenses. This is the historical um, average expenses that we do. It is roughly $6 million a month with quarterly increases that are slightly higher than that. But um, that will be $72 million in budgeted expenses this year. So we do have a, a, um, a budgeted deficit right now of about a million dollars. That does not include what we show in the forecast for revenue that is shorter than that. And also we are a little bit under on salaries and benefits. So that's something to keep in mind as we go forward till the end of the year. General fund expenditures, $35 million. It's up $1 million over last year or 3%. Operating expenses are up $600,000, about 2%, um, but all departments are on track to be at or below budget. Um, ITSD is the closest one. They're about 51% instead of 50%, but they do have some annual expenses that happen in the first six months of the year, so we anticipate that they will end the year at or below budget with, with the rest of the departments. The last slide today is the investment portfolio. We currently have $160 million of investments. Um, this is down from about $4 million from last year. Sorry that's so dark on this side. Um, we continue to track um, above. This is the rate of return. It's averaged 0.82%, um, just below 1%, but it continues to track above both the LGIP, which is the state pool of money market account, and also a weighted average metrics for bond portfolio. Um, I guess I have one more, sorry. As we go into September, we're, we're now talking with the departments. Um, the departments are preparing a list of modifications, a mid-biennium uh, modifications for the uh, mayor to review, which will then be brought forward to council. But things to consider as we go into that is that we do still have seven unsigned contracts. Several of those um, have retro pay associated with them. Um, expenses continue to outpace revenue growth. We have a budgeted deficit of $1 million, and in 2016, another bu budgeted deficit of $868,000. So right now, we're asking departments to um, work within their existing budget, both for 2015 and 2016, <coughs> bring those projects or money that's needed or changes needed for the mayor to review and then present to council. Um, but that's the schedule as we go into the fall for the budget portfolio. Okay. Any questions on that? Thank you, Brian. Any questions for Brian? Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. <laughs> no questions are good questions, Brian. Yeah. Um, we will now go to approval of minutes. We have one set of minutes for the 27th committee meetings. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor will say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries 6 0, 1 excused. Yes. Yes. I'm going to go to you right now. Okay, Mayor Linville, you go for it. Go for it. Uh, this is a, a, for your information. I thought I would update you on what the county council did with the resolution that, or the ordinance that was, um, was passed over to them by me. Um, and uh, there were some some changes, and I thought it might be interesting for you to know what they were. The council, um, under the leadership of Red Brown, was the one that made the... Let me also clarify, we're under old and new business now. I forgot to say that, so go ahead. Continue. Okay. This is old business. You pointed it to me, I so know, I, I, did. I was, went. Was... Um, I'm going to have Brian Heinrich go through the, the specifics. Um, 
uh, with you and then if there's any questions. And then we did receive a letter from the county executive requesting that, again, that we take action on the, the jail agreement, to be part of the jail agreement. So I feel that I need to give, explain that to you and then have you look at this and see if that's significant enough to make anybody's mind change. Okay, go ahead, okay? Brian. Go ahead, Brian. Brian. Thank Thanks. you, Brian Heinrich, Mayor's Office. We handed out just uh, a moment ago two different just copies. A, just Sorry. a second, and I think Jack's here. Yep, he's here. So Jack's here, if you, I guess if you had any questions, go ahead. Thank you. You'll see in the header there's a clean version and then the red line strikeout, and I think I would just uh, essentially draw your attention to uh, the third page, the two bullets. I'm look, working off of the, the strikeout version copy, the two bullets in red on page three. Those were the ones that uh, had the most changes um, from what the mayor had sent over to the county council and then the discussion at county council. Uh, and the, the changes are essentially that the bullet that begins expand as soon as reasonably possible, that was changed from immediately expand available alternatives. Uh, and then the uh, following bullet, uh, everything after ordinance was struck out and what that language uh, as amended by the council, uh, county council uh, in July was that the signatory cities would pay for those services. They amended that to just say that those interlocal agreements to provide those services uh, consistent with the ordinance would, if necessary. So they would negotiate those interlocals if it was only necessary. It did not require the signatory cities to pay for those services. Um, the other recommendations, you'll see those in strikeout and in red line throughout the document were approved by the county council, including, uh, including the mayor of Bellingham as a participant. Can you, can you go through can you, them, Brian, sure. Do you want to just? Yeah, so um, if you'd like, just we can go back to page one, the fourth whereas. And again, maybe the red line strikeout's the best one to work off of. You'll see it in there. The mayor suggested that uh, capital and operating funds would be included, uh, necessary for a newer expanded triage center. That was accepted by the county council. The sixth whereas, you'll see it uh, there, the resulting value and proceeds. The mayor suggested that net be struck from that, so it reads the resulting value and proceeds. That would be from the transaction if the behavioral health crisis triage center was sold. And then at the top of page two, the mayor proposed that you'll see the strike out there that uh, the in parallel with the construction of the new countywide jail facility that that is struck, that was accepted as well. Uh, and then um, item number six was added and accepted by the county council. You'll see it there in red that the recommendations to the county for enhancements of alternative services in the existing facility prior to the expansion or relocation of the facility. Again, that's referencing uh, the initial tasks uh, accomplished by the task force. Sorry, one more. Further down, page two, um, the request was that those recommendations uh, be provided without cost to the signatory cities of the jail facility use agreement. Um, that was also accepted. Uh, again, that re would require the, or, or only apply to the signatory cities of the services that they would receive. Okay. Reaction? Comments, questions, anything? Go ahead, Jack. I was just wondering if Jack I uh, could comment sure. on. Sure, come on down, Jack, sit at the table there. I should have asked you to come down there earlier. So. Jack, if you would, if you could comment on the, uh, the language that, uh, that is contained within this ordinance, uh, how your, your thoughts are about this, given everything else that's going on. Yes, this is uh, uh, County Executive Jack Lowes. Uh, Brian, may I use your copy of the document? I'm supportive of the uh, Jail Diversion Task Force uh, as 
as envisioned by the Whatcom County Council, I've been uh, favorable to uh, working uh, with them uh, since uh, the inception uh, and the original drafts that came through. Uh, the suggestions that the mayor uh, brought forward um, for, the, for the most part are, are fine and workable with us, uh, workable with the count, county council. Timelines within the ordinance are extremely tight uh, the county council is already finding being able to, uh, in the middle of the summer, be able to appoint the committee and get the task force started. And uh, so to get this meaningful work uh, underway is going, to be, um, is going to be challenging to do within the timelines we have, but we have a commitment to make that happen. So uh, I, feel, I feel good about the, the changes. I think that uh, you know one of the things that the county council was was, and I'm not speaking for them, but one of the things that I sense that uh, you know it is a task force to provide recommendations to them, not necessarily direct them. Be the same. Um, I think the same philosophy that you folks would uh, would hand would have uh, with task force that you would appoint. So uh, I'm pleased that the mayor is now part of the uh, part of the team, and I feel that. Uh, we're going to be able to, uh, working together, be able to go a long ways in providing uh, additional services uh, for our community. If you have specific questions that you would, uh, you, you have as per the language, I'll, I'll give it my best shot speaking uh, on behalf of the council. Well, I had a, uh, actually a counter question for the mayor. Are there elements that you still would like to see in this, this agreement or this ordinance that uh, you feel is necessary? Well, I think the, the bottom line for all of this is it doesn't guarantee exactly when these will happen or, or what they'll be because they are recommendations that come forward to the council. I agree with their county council, the county council, that of course recommendations that come out of a task force are theirs to deal with. So um, as far as um, does, this, does this change my opinion or whatever of this. Um, I still have a concern that we are determining um, what we're telling the public we're going to do before this task force finishes its work. Other than that, I think the changes that the county council made were good ones. They were ones that I asked for, but it's still a recommendation. It's not, um, it's not a direction. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Or do you want to think about it until tonight? That's fine. I mean, we can bring it up tonight and talk about it more when, when, when Pinky's here and we have a full council. But this is an opportunity with, with Jack and Kelly in the room. If you have any questions now, now is the time to... Because I don't expect you to have to come back <laughs> tonight unless you want to. I mean, it's going to be a long evening anyway, so. If I may, just in, just in conclusion to this, uh, the Whatcom County Council and the Whatcom County Administration are looking forward to getting this task force uh, in place, getting the participants together, um, looking at our existing program, validating the work that we're already doing, and being able to, and, and I think our council is excited to hear what the task force has to offer in the way of suggestions for us either to mod modify existing programs, augment existing programs, or build new programs based on the work that they do. Um, and in conjunction with that, of course, we have the need for the new, uh, for the new replacement correctional facility. And uh, so we have a lot of balls in the air. Um, and uh, I, I'm excited for the future for us if we can work together, um, um, together to make both of those, uh, both of those items happen. So um, again, one more time, uh, respect whatever decision you make. If, uh, if Bellingham chooses to be responsible for your, uh, you know, for your um, correctional uh, 
our requirements in future years is, as I respect that, and, and we're more than happy to, to work with that and allow you folks to take, uh, to take control of that end of it. Personally, I believe it's best for us to work uh, cooperatively together into the future as it relates to that. I think we've got a good, solid program out there. It's one that not everybody, um, everybody likes, including me. I mean, I negotiated it with, uh, with all of the mayors at the table, and it's not a perfect document, but uh, it does get us past, um, past the point of having an in insufficient uh, correctional facility and moves us uh, into the future uh, working together. And as I articulated in the email over the weekend is, is that I think that a decision by Bellingham to be able to, uh, in, in taking on your legally responsible end of it without um, contractual requirements uh, or obligations on behalf of the county is going to be quite difficult and it's going to move a lot of not only the correctional needs but a lot of the stuff that we're going to do as it relates to alternatives is, is we're going to start splitting the system up. And uh, for, that, for that reason is, is I'd like you to consider this and uh, realize that, uh, you know, the members of the Whatcom County Council and the county executive uh, want to work with you uh, to make all of this happen. So uh, I would, again, I'd answer any questions and no, I really wasn't anticipating coming back tonight mm -hmm. unless there's a direct need for that. Michael. Well, uh, you said one thing that if the city of Bellingham chose to go our own way and have our own facility, you'd respect that, but I don't think anyone in the city suggested we want to take that route. I think we've suggested that we have wanted to have a unified facility. I think this uh, resolution on a task force uh, as improved is an enormous step in the, in the direction I think that, that many of us in the city have been talking about, but I, I don't think it removes all the final barriers and doubts we had about the entirety of the jail agreement. Um, but it's, it's not that when I'm not asking you to respect, say, my choice to go a different route and, and for the city to house its own inmates, that's not my choice. That's not the direction I want to go at all. I, I would still like to try to find a way to have a unified facility. That's still my um, preferred route. Jack? So I guess I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to wrap this around. Because the task force right now is going to come up with recommendations, Everything that we say about this is uh, really hypothetical. So uh, just hypothetically, if they were to go and say that in order to accomplish the programs that they wanted to recommend and that the county council would, would want to adopt, ended up costing $5 million or $10 million a year or whatever the number is, wh where is that coming from? I mean, are you going to take this out of out of your general fund, out of your operations, or is it going to come from from the uh, the sales tax? Where, where's the source of the money that uh, to be able to accomplish the recommendations that actually would be, get adopted? Well, you know, we don't know in uh, November whether or not the sales tax measure that's on the ballot is going to pass or fail. If it uh, if if it doesn't fail, obviously, Whatcom County is going to um, going to close the circle around our existing facility and uh, Ryan, is his microphone on? I'm and have to use that for the next uh, the next few years. You got volume that better with go, the volume? There we go. That's better. Yeah. So you know the the task force is going to have to be cognizant of uh, the costs associated with the programs, uh, and if suggestions are moved forward that uh, that are so good that they they take precedent and priority over existing programs you could find out that we would be you know continuing to up the game by uh, by changing the work that we're doing into different areas and if it is so compelling that it would uh, that it would require new money into it is is that's when the county council is going to have to take a look at it and and determine at that point whether or not um, they want to uh, use an existing fund source or not uh, to be able to uh, provide that service uh, to the community I don't have the answer for it's you a right hard now. Question to you know, if if a program came forward that uh, uh, out of the task force that uh, encouraged us to spend ten million dollars more a year on um, on issues, I think it would be very difficult for Whatcom County to be able to come up with that kind of money. 
but you know we have the behavioral health uh, sales tax coming in. We have some some jail monies coming in, and if there's a payoff for uh, the services that we're providing, that's what we're expecting to get out of the task force. Those type of recommendations that will ultimately put us into a position that it will. Um, hopefully negate our need for expanding the correctional facility in years to come because uh, you know we aren't not building a we aren't building a, a correctional facility for today we're building one for the next 30 some years when we're anticipating another 70 some thousand people in the county so we have a lot of work to do and thanks go ahead mayor yeah thank you jack for for coming today and i i think that and Correct me if I'm wrong. I think this reconfirms, though, one of the concerns I had, which is the, the sales tax that we're voting on, the sales tax that's part of the jail agreement, is for the operations of the facility, the jail facility, not necessarily to use on alternative programs. Is that, am I accurate? The first priority of the sales tax revenue is going to be to the um, to the bondholders to be able to pay that off. Now, Whatcom County, over the next 30 some years, is going to have about 70 million dollars worth of new revenue um, over and above what the bond payments are. That we will have the ability to discuss where is most appropriate uh, to put that money just as the cities are going to have an additional 85 million over and above what you guys are going to be able to retain that you're going to have a choice of where you'd like to do and of that 85 million i think about 55 to 60 million dollars of that is going to be retained by the city of bellingham over the life of it so we do have opportunities to work collaboratively together on some new revenue that's out there, but I don't know what, I, I, I don't, I haven't in my mind envisioned exactly what that's going to be, but the task force is going to, uh, is going to have a large influence in being able to uh, establish areas of opportunity for us. Um, you know, as, as with the city of Bellingham, you know, we do have the need to operate the new facility and the new facility is going to cost some more dollars to operate and the agreement that was forged with the mayors was is that Whatcom County would pay exactly its fair share of usage. So um, whereas in prior years and the prior agreements uh, that was a little bit more loosely defined than what it is moving forward, we know that we're going to pay 80 percent or more of the operating costs in the future years. But it's going to be a priority thing. Uh, you know, we've got a very conservative sales tax uh, escalator in this at, at two and a half percent a year. Over the last prior 30 years, uh, sales tax revenue has increased over four percent a year. Well, if you, if you would move that forward, this 85 million that I'm talking about to the cities could be substantially more than that, just like it could be from the county. And that's where our, that's where our opportunity is going to be in future years. And I'd be looking forward to uh, working with you on those opportunities for the months or years that I may be around here yet. <laughs> okay, anything else? Okay, we will be discussing this tonight for possible action, but I just want to take this opportunity to thank Mayor Linville and Mayor Lowes. You have no idea how oh, exactly. Mayor, uh, Executive <laughs> Lowes, excuse me, he might wish he was mayor sometimes. <laughs> um, to see both of you in this room trying to get to a common goal, I mean, it is really refreshing and hopefully no matter what happens here, that continues. And I want to thank you for your uh, tenacity and going to the bottom of the ninth with this two out bases loaded and you're up there again. So I, I want to thank you for that and thank the mayor and uh, we'll uh, discuss this tonight for some action. Thank you for coming, sir. Okay, we will now go to executive session. We have three items. The first item is potential litigation, 10 minutes. Second item is potential lit litigation, 15 Pete? minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, you, I'm sorry. No, wait a minute. We're we are still, not done with no, older new business. No, we're not so. done with older new business. Okay. Anybody have on the, any other older new business, Terry? Yeah, I uh, wanted to bring up uh, at the last meeting, we had talked about having a public hearing 
uh, looking at the charter review uh, amendments that are going out to the uh, that are going to be on the ballot and I just wanted to bring back a couple issues for the council to get some input I've been talking with Peter Rafato and with Mar Marie's been helping with it and one of the things we wanted to check with was since it could be a if we have that public hearing it could be a big one if the council would consider having it on an alternative Monday if a space is available as opposed to on a regular meeting night or do you want it on the same night I th my own opinion we better do it on a different night because it's going to be they're going to come from all over both cities county everything it's gonna uh, I would definitely meeting. agree with that yeah it's we won't be able meeting. to fit it in, in, the, in the okay that's one of the things I wanted to to, fi to find out and we're looking we want to be able to have it find the date that I don't know if, if the if this room is open like on the, the 4th of uh, October which would be which is an alternative mo the Monday where we don't meet and I was looking at that one for a couple reasons one that's before the ballots go out and we want to have you know it before that and it would give us the next meeting if we were to, you know, with the public hearing, we can just have a public hearing and do nothing, or a pub, out of a public hearing, there could be recommendations to support or not support a, uh, any of the, the amendments. And if we were to support, then on the 12th, we could have a resolution supporting or whatever and so that that's the date that would be preferable to get the time out uh, to the time before it, uh, it goes out to the, the the ballot and if that one works if let's see if that would work with the council so it's actual October, 5th. October 5th okay uh, I can't read a calendar <laughs> and the other idea that Peter and I had talked about was Instead of doing a hearing on all of the uh, amendments that are being proposed, we kind of looked at the ones that had the greatest effect on the citizens of Bellingham. And basically we were looking at the first three propositions, Proposition 1, 2, and 3. Proposition 1 is methods of electing council members and that uh, Measure would amend the charter to provide election uh, of county council members uh, by voters only from within council districts from which the uh, candidate was nominated, except for the at large. The second one was a limiting power of council to amend the charter. Uh, this measure would amend uh, the charter per, to prohibit the county council from proposing charter amendments to previous charter amendments that have been approved by a two-thirds majority except if the council adopts a proposal for such amendments by a 7-0 vote. And the third was limiting power of council to amend charters election provision and this one uh, prohibits county council from proposing any charter amendments to the charter which pertain to the methods of nominating and elected and county council members, except if the council adopts a proposal by a 7-0 vote. So those three, plus the council's amendment uh, to a five, five uh, districts. Uh, district, and wanted to see what if that would if that works with with the council. Anybody have any problem with that? No. Nope. Good plan. Okay. okay. So, okay. Just and, and the others, if, if it's okay with the council, with working with Peter and Marie, if the, for us to, to have the approval to, to go forward and set up what we're looking at doing, you know, the process. We're looking at probably contacting the uh, the charter review committee with a, sending a letter, see if they have recommendations, the chair about pro or con. That that we'll check with them first to see if they could make recommendations. We'd like to have somebody talk pro, somebody 
con with that, and then we would try to get a moderate moderator. And if we could have the council approval to, to go forward and do that without bringing each step back at this point, if that would be okay. Okay. Mr. Lillard, please. I have something similar to Terry's, yes. but a little bit smaller. This has okay. to do with the proposal brought forward by Council Member Murphy on uh, paid sick leave. Uh -huh. um, the administration made it clear that they don't have room on the work plan to do anything. So we're sort of moving forward on a slow and, and improvisational basis. Uh, Council Member uh, Murphy and Vargas and I have talked amongst ourselves and with members in the community. Uh, we're probably going to be hosting some informal stakeholder sessions and then we'll be building to uh, an in, a committee meeting probably in the evening at some place like the library rather than an afternoon work session, yeah. uh, a listening session sometime in the evening. Um, don't know when they will be. I was looking at September dates. I don't know if it will happen that soon or not. Um, we're, we're taking it slow. And I would like to ask the council, however, if I could draw on uh, Mark Gardner's time, just for some background information. Again, no one is trying to develop a proposal. We're just looking for background facts for the discussion to hear from all sides. We're not moving towards conclusion at this point. Okay. Sounds good. No problem. The other Anybody thing, else? Oh, go just ahead. really quick, the other thing that we discussed, and um, I hope the council might be willing to support this, is that any community member could also contact Mark to provide feedback via email if they're not comfortable mm -hmm. with in-person or stakeholder meetings or community meetings. So then it would be the hope that Mark could compile that information in a way that it would be easy for the council to digest. Mm -hmm. Gary. Yeah, I just wanted to mention I was able to attend the christening of the Saley Star and I was really proud of our mayor. One swing One shot, and she right? <laughs> smashed that champagne bottle and it's now christened in the rain and in the wind. But it was a very nice ceremony and we have our boat christened. Dan. Um, I was at that um, ceremony as well. I do want to point out that there was a net wrapped around the bottle so no yes. glass <laughs> or enter the water. Exactly. Um, I also wanted to thank um, Fire Department uh, Chief Newwald and Battalion Chief uh, Chuck Henkel for um, the Battalion Chief level ride along basically to have a um, kind of a 30,000 foot view of the Fire Department and the extensive territory that our Fire Department covers from uh, District 8, Gooseberry Point, all the way down to Fairhaven. So it's a huge um, geographic area. Just wanted to extend my appreciation to that department uh, for, for that ride along. Okay, anything else under all the new business? Oh, yes, ma'am, go ahead. Yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me. First of all, I think it's a very good idea to ask the Charter Review Commission for pros and cons. I think that's that appears to be the most objective way to do it. So yeah. I think that was, that was a good suggestion. Secondly, as far as the uh, idea that um, for the sick and paid Paid sick leave. Paid, paying safe leave. That's what I meant to say. Uh, the, the, the thing is it, is, it is on the work plan. It's just not at the top as we're going through everything else. So I wanted to make it clear I think that this is not something that we're saying, no, we're not going to do this. But I think Rick laid out a very clear idea because of the workload of the people in planning and community development that they needed to put things on the, on the work plan. <clears throat> and if there's any factual information about how this potentially could affect the city or what the city, you know, roles of the city in enforcement or things like that, you know, we could pull up something like that uh, because Brian can pull it, Brian Henshaw can pull it out of the, out of the computer. I thought you were going to say hat. No, not out of the hat. Uh, so I just wanted to, I wanted to make that clear. And the idea, I thought, when it went to committee was that, that Michael would use his committee so it wouldn't potentially cause a lot more work for other people organizing times and meetings. And I think if you can do that easily, all the better for you. But, um, but I didn't want you to think that staff had abandoned you. It's just that we're having some really exciting things that I hope I get to announced to you too. So the fact finding is I think the most important thing to do right at this point in time. And I think that was the understanding I had from Roxanne when she brought this up to me is this is an issue that we want to talk about and we want to gather facts about it. So I also think that that's a great way to start 
this conversation. Michael. Well, that's good here, but to let me clarify on this, the, the goal for the committee would be to gather input, feedback, facts, ideas, comments, and then it would come back to the council, and then we could decide if we really wanted to move forward on it. Or not. And that would be the point where we put on a work plan for maybe next year, if there was a nod after we'd gathered facts. So this is just one step along the way. I think everybody's heading in the right direction. It's okay. sim similar to what we do with the rental. So 12 we, years we from now, you'll be reporting that out, my friend. <laughs> okay. We will now go to uh, executive session. We have three items, potential litigation, 10 minutes, potential litigation, 15 minutes, potential litigation, 10 minutes for a total of 35 minutes. I should be back here at quarter after three.